Hi all, I'd like to show you an outrageous game played by Frank James Marshall, who I'm currently studying and taking great interest in. This game was played in New York 1940 at the Marshall Chess Club, I believe. His opponent was Heman Rogozin. So e4 from Frank, and we have the Sicilian defence, and now an unusual gambit, Sicilian wing gambit, b4. Black took this pawn, and after a3, now black played knight c6. So not accepting that pawn there. Frank took on b4, and now we have knight f6, which is a slightly provocative move. So black has got two pieces out, and all white's done is move with pawns so far. But it gets uh, slightly outrageous, then very outrageous, uh, uh, from my point of view on this game. We have b5, okay, knight d4. So black is still attacking this pawn. c3 kicking that knight, knight e6. And now e5. So the knights have been kicked around here, knight d5. And in this position, uh, white hasn't yet developed a single piece. It's move 8. So white now plays c4. OK. Now, white is actually doing quite well here because when he can, uh, when he does move pieces, he's got various options. If the knight went here, for example, then uh, knight f3, this is a comfortable position. White's got good central control. This might be good. This might be good to switch a rook across, even. There's a lot of useful squares here that these two pawns have facilitated. The knight, though, went to f4, which may be a mistake. We have the move g3, and now it goes to g6. So what would you play here if I gave you five seconds to think about this video, to pause the video now? White play. OK. Another pawn move, f4. It actually threatens now f5. And it leaves white uh, better, this, this this move f4. Again, this is now move 10. So, and not a single piece moved from white. Black now sacrifices on f4, uh, what else? If, say, knight c5, this is just running into d4, this this is unpleasant. And then f5, and then black's going to have to sacrifice this knight. Somehow it's not it's not good. So the knight gets, a knight gets sacrificed here. Knight g takes f4, g takes, knight takes f4. And now another pawn moves d4, hitting the knight, knight g6. So what would be a good move in this position? This is move 13 now, so not a single piece moved yet. White's got a big advantage though, so without moving any pieces. <laughs> White's got a significant advantage, of course, a piece up. But what would you play here? It's a good move to carry on uh, the advantage. Might give you five seconds here. Okay, h4, yes, why not? Carry on. The knight harassment. So e6, h5, black throws in the check. And finally, now at move 15, Frank moves a piece, bishop d2. Ah, <laughs> so quite a few pawn moves in the opening, but to advantage, it's to advantage. If it's all to advantage, then why not? Bishop takes d2, knight takes d2, knight e7. And now, actually, this pawn is actually useful for h6, uh, but first knight e4 immediately threatens knight d6 check, knight f5 parrying that, but now h6. Okay, now if knight takes h6, I think white can get away with exchange sack, so taking knight d6 check, this, this is strong. Say so queen f3, and this is very, very strong. It's very difficult to parry the threats here, it's busted. So um, here, g6. So this pawn moved to h6 has now weakened some dark squares. Knight f6 check. And now developing another piece, knight f3. So white's knights are at it now. This knight can come to g5 and start coordinating with its fellow knight on h7. We have d6, knight g5. d takes, d takes, and the queen's come off. But still, white's advantage now is overwhelming. 
And you'll notice even this bishop's got a good square potentially. This bishop's hemmed in. This knight's huge on f6. White's actually threatening a mate in seven here technically with rook d8 check. Uh, black stops rook d8 check with king e7. But now a nifty move here uh, just just to try and support this idea of rook d7. This move rook h3 just switching like this. Fantastic stuff. B6, and now that square is good for the bishop, bishop g2, rook b8. And now white played knight g takes h7. I think there were a lot of strong moves there, but here black resigned. This move's coming up soon as well. Uh, I think white could have just played this here. This is actually a mate in seven in any case. It's such a crushing position. Uh, for example, taking. Uh, now the false mate is with knight g takes h7, so sealing off the exit. So it's similar to the game move, just a different move order. And this is actually a forced mate in five here. So even say rook b7, we can just take that. For example, like this, that's that's going to be a mate in one. So black can't really stave off. Uh, yeah, it's it's a forced mate. Black's best from a computer point of view to survive is taking here. Rook d8 is forcing a mate very quickly. I just thought this was a very amusing game. It just it just stood out from the games that I've had a look at. Frank Marshall is best known for his um, immortal uh, queen sacrifice, which I hope most of you have seen. But don't worry if you haven't. It's going to be the first one on a feature video coming up for Marshall's sacrifices. So I basically analysed um, a huge game collection of 150 of his games and. Yeah, my sense of amusement was tickled with this particular game. I hope you find it amusing. Just so many pawn moves, but uh, yeah, just crushing. The knights are really just just silly here after f4. It's such a strong move here, it's just to threaten to fault the knights with f5. There's just nothing black can do. They've just been stumbled around. Black's development is also destroyed here. Yeah. I thought it an amusing game. I hope you did too. Okay, let's see that in fast forward. So h6 did did some damage as well. So yeah, <laughs> the final move was actually um, after rook b8, knight g takes h7. So white is now threatening this. He just sealed off the f8 exit. Okay, comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.